Well, we have another sweet baby failure over here at deidetected.com. Great website made by the great man, Cabrutus. Uh, you'll see the name of this title here, Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn. So this is a game that Sweet Baby touched. It just came out recently, I think, about a week or so it's been out. And I thought it'd be fun to see how this game is doing. And here are the Steam numbers. <laughs> a all-time peak of 500 and 41 players over on Steam. Now, I don't have Xbox numbers. I don't have, I don't even know if it's on PlayStation. So I don't know what those numbers are. But on Steam, it's an absolute failure. 541 purchases for this game. That's pretty sad. Unless there's more people playing offline or something. Uh, this is pretty pathetic. I don't even think this is an online game. But that is some failure that, I don't know, it's got to be a, a new a new milestone, I would think, or something. Uh, so let's see, when did this game come out exactly? July 18th. So, yeah, it hasn't been out that long. Now, I want to do a correction here. I said 541 purchases. Those are just people that have actually played the game total. Because I think as soon as you fire it up, you're going to be on the Steam chart. So you would hit that peak. And that's the all-time peak. So there could be people buying it here and there, right? Like it's, This isn't an exact number. That's just peak. And there's probably people that bought it and haven't even played it. You would actually be surprised how many people buy games and don't even play them. That actually came out. Here's an article that covered it. Uh, Money Sync Steam users have reportedly spent almost $20 billion on games they'd never played. So <laughs> it must be nice to be able to just buy all these games and not play them. But yeah, people will do that. So to be fair, let's go ahead and say a thousand people bought Flintlock. Oh, that's still pretty damn pathetic. Pathetic. I think it's even free on Xbox Game Pass. I wonder how many people even downloaded it even though, like, for free. Like, they don't even want to take up the space. By the way, just to show you how shitty games media is, uh, the gamer is encouraging this behavior. I'm glad I've got hundreds of dollars worth of unplayed games in my Steam library. Because they don't actually play games. <laughs> All right, so Flintlock, a huge disaster. Nobody's playing it. Uh, surprisingly, critics giving it a 71 out of 100, which actually isn't bad. Users hate it, 3.9. Let's check it out on, B on PC. It's at a 70. And then over on Xbox, it's at a 72. So they're not giving it really bad reviews, but I wouldn't expect that because the game has sweet baby influence. And because of that, critics are going to kind of go easier on this game because it's got a lot of the DEI stuff in it. And because of that, they will give it an automatic higher review. It's just how game journalists roll. Uh, they roll with corruption and they care more about activism than actual gaming. But one thing I do want to show you is why all of these websites attacked DEI detected and Cabrutus. Remember when all that went down when he started to expose the sweet baby shit and all of those game journalists like Alyssa Mercanti from Kotaku went wild trying to destroy him and deplatform him? Well, it's because of stuff like this. There's an interesting article from that park place that dropped going over something that Rocksteady said. Uh, Grand Theft Auto developer claims negative review campaigns can lead to significant harm, including loss of players and revenues. Now, they used to say that what we say doesn't matter. Turns out, though, when you criticize this shit, you do reach people, and they lose money, which is why game journalists attack the hell out of all of us. 
And it's not just a game journalism thing. It's Hollywood. They don't like players having a voice. They want to be able to just slop shit onto your plate and move you along. Well, it's nice that they actually come out and admit that, yeah, when people criticize us, we lose money in revenue. Or we lose money in players. Grand Theft Auto publisher Take-Two Interactive shared a number of risks the company faces, including negative review campaigns, which it claims can lead to significant harm, including the loss of players and revenues. In Take-Two Interactive's Form 10K filing with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the company listed a number of risks it faces, including the competitive nature of the video game industry, the health of the console market, the development and growth of AI technologies, data breaches, worker unionization, maintaining license agreements with Microsoft and Sony, the growth of the mobile market, monetizing free-to-play games, and more. The company also lists negative reviews as a significant risk to its business. Take-Two Interactive explains if the ratings of any of our games decline or we receive significant negative reviews, that result in a decrease that results in a decrease of our ratings, our games could be more difficult for players to find or recommend. In addition, we may be we may be subject to negative review campaigns or defamation campaigns intended to harm our ratings. Any such decline may lead to a loss of players and revenue, additional advertising and marketing costs and reputation harm it adds. And they're betting big on Grand Theft Auto 6, which is probably going to do well. I am curious to what the content of that game has, considering, you know, there's been big changes at Rocksteady. Remember that article where they got rid of their frat boy culture? So, you know, I, the terminology in here is definitely swayed. Like, they've definitely pushed it to sway the argument towards, you know, people criticizing them as defamation, which is how I take that. Because uh, look at what happened to... The Saints Row reboot. Remember that game? The developer was attacking people. Journalists were attacking people because they were criticizing this game. Remember that? The developers were attacking people. Well, at least the social media account, the official social media account was attacking people. Look how that worked out for them. So when you, when you piss off gamers... And I think this goes for anything, but gamers are a little bit, I think, because gamers will actually organize and get things done, unlike a lot of other hobbies and mediums. So, I mean, I, I think it's more like gamers organizing and criticizing things is definitely more effective than I think a lot of the Hollywood stuff or any other group. Uh, but this is the first time I I think that we've actually had a developer come out and admit, like, yeah, these things actually damage us when players are pissed. And I think this translates to just about everything, to be honest. This isn't just exclusive to video games. But, yeah, Flintlock, they got hurt by the DEI sweet baby narrative, and uh, anytime I think of this game or heard anything about this game, it was their involvement with sweet baby, and that definitely damaged them. I mean, you could see it right here, man. All-time peak on the day of this game's release. 541 players. That's where that peak would have came from, the day of release. That's all you got. That's pathetic. Anyway, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think about all of this. I'd like to hear from you in the comments. Also, if you would, please like, subscribe, share the stream, hit that notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.